It's equally important to repot your house plants in fall as it is in spring because the roots are still actively growing, you just can't see them. So if you want to learn how to repot your plants and why fall is a perfect time for repotting, then keep watching. Hi, y'all know what it is. Today we're going to be repotting a couple of my plants. We're also going to be replenishing the nutrients of some of these plants so that we can make sure that they're all ready to continuously grow throughout fall. Just like the homicide rate for black women and girls are continuously growing to 33%, yet no one is talking about it. Mm -hmm. You always want to make sure that the roots are healthy and they're growing strong, especially if you start to see yellow leaves like this. It kind of tells you that something may be going wrong or it may be dropping old leaves. So you always want to check the root ball to see if it's healthy, if the roots are brown, strong, you know, kind of white looking then that means that you have no issues and they're still actively growing but if they are if they are mushy dark brown then you may have experienced root rot and that's when you want to get your plant out of the that mix that it's in and then repot it into something else or even propagate it if it's this root bound then it is also telling you that it's not retaining enough moisture so you're having to constantly water the plant so that it can stay alive basically downfall of not repotting your plants when it's extremely root bound is that you might suck its growth or even kill it, like the killings of black women especially in domestic violence situations are not taken seriously because domestic violence advocacy is often shaped by white women so therefore there aren't enough solutions for black women and girls in those situations my all-purpose pot mix and my succulent pot mix which we're going to be using throughout this video today to repot a lot of these plants they're both very well draining they do they do retain enough moisture to where your plants will not dry out completely or desiccate um, but it will have enough moisture to where they will be healthy but not to the point where they're experiencing root rot throughout the uh, fall and winter months they're also enriched with a lot of nutrients like i spoke about earlier these can be purchased from my etsy shop i'm gonna link it down below in the description box so y'all can check it out okay so let's get to repotting these plants honey like i came here for it is my handy dandy mat because repotting can get very very messy okay i purchased this online i'm gonna be linking it to in my like to know it everything i'm gonna be talking about is gonna be linked in my like to know it as well this whole video you're going to be hearing me rave about terracotta pots i love terracotta pots they're my favorite to use the terracotta pots are the pots that i use the most out of any other pot a because they're very inexpensive b it helps to protect your plants from root rot because the porous nature of the clay in the terracotta wicks away from the soil wicks the water away from the soil and kind of helps it to dry out faster so in the middle you might see that it is wet i always soak them before i use them because Again, force nature of the clay, it will immediately start to wick the water away. And you don't want to, that to happen too fast. So it's always good to soak your terracotta pots at least 30 minutes to an hour or overnight. Okay, so to keep me on task, I'm going to be using the, my Notion app. I found this really uh, cute template that, that kind of like helps you, um, you know, keep up with your plant track. I'm able to put in what type of plant it is, what's going on with it, what kind of nutrient, you know, what kind of mix it needs. If it uh, just need watering or if I just just need to update the mix so that's what i'm going to be following today so it is not sponsored by notion so we're going to start off with our aeroids and because i showed y'all this already there this is my monstera deliciosa and mini monstera or refuted for terra tetrasperma mixture um, i repotted this in my last repotting in my last video where i showed y'all how to create the potting mix that i'm going to be using today what well, version of that because i updated it since then but if you do want to learn how to create your own potting mix you can go ahead and watch the video i'll leave a card somewhere up here so that you can see about what a year ago maybe that I repotted it and I think what happened um because I did expect a lot more growth I actually expected it to grow as big as my biggest monstera that has a lot of penetrations but it did I think what happened here is that I may have in that mix I remember I put pine, bun, uh, pine bark vines and also orchid bark and I may have made it like just a little bit too chunky but I mean it did love it because the roots did grow significantly the goal here is just to make sure that I'm putting it in a very rich mix now um get it into a bigger pot to see like you know the roots grow more there is one leaf right here that is growing out so cute always go up two sides bigger so that the root ball can really fit I put the root ball inside the new terracotta pot to make sure that it has enough room to expand a quick trick if you want to make sure that you have the right size pot to size up to or if you're in a nursery and you want to buy bigger plant pots is to bring a measuring tape like this with you start from the middle part and the inside and it'll tell you how much bigger this pot is which this one is an eight inch and i'm coming from a six inch and i need to be in an eight inch so that's 
perfect. These roots are very healthy. I'm just going to basically use the same potty mix that I use. I'm going to take that old potty mix and put it into this new pot and then I'm going to fill it and mix it with the new potty mix. Only time that I will literally change out the potty mix is if, if it's a coming from a nursery where I literally I literally don't trust nursery soils. If you follow my TikTok, you've heard me say that a couple of times. Or if the plant has experienced some type of root rot or some type of decline. Again, I'm going to take my all-purpose potty mix. The great thing about Monstera's is that they are not picky at all. A lot of people, I feel like they overthink it with Monstera's. Monstera's just love a good, well-draining, chunky, nutrient-dense mix. That's it. They love it. They are aeroids, so they love to climb. So you always want to mimic their natural environment and mimic the natural soil that they grow. My all-purpose potty mix has helped my other Monstera grow so much. I, the leaves are growing so big. I just actually can't, got two more leaves and I want me to do a video on how to grow monsteras, how to keep monsteras, you know, going straight up, how to, you know, put a moss pole, then definitely let me know. I always put the potty mix in a third of the way and then I make a hole. I know some people, they always talk about the hole at the bottom and how the mix kind of like goes through. You could use a mesh you know a filter or something or a coffee filter or something like that that's gonna keep it so i'll just tease this just a little bit to kind of like you know have it you know to where they can kind of like expand and then boom plop it in there if you start to fill around it into the point where you feel like it's stabilized i like to leave at least an inch or so at the top so not overfill it. Let me tell you, honey, when you're trying to uh, water all these plants and everything and you have too much mix at the top, all that water is going to do is just start to overflow. It's going to go everywhere. You're going to have a messy watering situation. So definitely do not pack the pot of mix all the way up to the top. And voila, we took the plant from this little pot and to this bigger pot, this two inches bigger pot. I'm not gonna water this plant right now. Since I do have so many plants to water, I'm gonna be watering them all together so that you all can see how I water a big group of plants. Definitely stay tuned to the end so that you could see the watering and the pest control. This one is, was literally, it's one of my favorite plants. If you don't know me, I'm an alocasia girl. I love alocasias. I just love how beautiful they look. The majority of the plants that I own that are the same kind of like species are alocasias. Now this one, the issue that happened with this one is that Again, all of the this is what I was talking about when I say when you have it in a pot and it becomes root bound or all of the nutrients become depleted, this is pretty much what happened. I repotted this plant in pretty much over a year. So all of the nutrients started to deplete in it and it just started to die off and everything. To note about allocations is that you don't want to ever let them get too dry, especially ones like this one. So you don't want to do that. You always want to make sure that your um your allocations are very, very moist. That's why I'm gonna be using again my all-purpose potted mix because it's perfect for this allocation. As you can see, there are like some leaves that are trying to like come out in it, little baby leaves and stuff. So we're gonna give this a whole new haircut, honey. Okay, make sure that we give it the attention that we need to give it. Like if we gave attention to the black women who are crying out for help in domestic violence situations or but they're being abused by just regular men that they encounter, if we listen to that more, then maybe we can put a stop to the many killings and homicides that black and brown women are facing. Pretty much how we didn't believe Megan Thee Stallion was shot by Tory Lanez. So all these Alcina came out and said that Tory Lanez attacked him, and now we believe her. We gotta start believing black women when we say things the first time. Here we go. Ooh, all right. Now that I've taken everything off of here, I'm just gonna gather these leaves. I love to take all the dead leaves and just put it in a bag. Again, y'all know I like to reuse stuff, so I like to just put them all my dead leaves in a bag like this, and I just store them to get to my worms um, when it's time to feed them, and they tear the leaves up. They love it. Well, actually, let me. I'm gonna tease it a little bit just to see if I'm like losing any roots or anything like that. But maybe it did experience a little bit of root rot ah look at that yeah i feel like the roots probably brought it a little bit in here so yeah because they just they just kind of like coming off like anytime you see the roots come off like this it is you know a little bit of rot so this one is going to go through an extreme shock what i'm going to do is i'm just going to remove this soil from it and do a full rehabbing of it. When you let the roots get too dry, they also start to desiccate and become like very, very, you know, flimsy, losing everything like that. I will do a separate video on how to cure root rot. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the, the stuff that I need. I'm gonna remove that 
and so we're just left with this <laughs> oh my god and we're actually gonna pot it into a smaller pot because we don't want it to experience any more like you know shocked in what it's going through so i'm gonna rinse off the roots i'm gonna go down two sizes and use this four inch instead to go ahead and put it in a big part of the reason why i'm just not like oh it's a dead plant i'm just gonna leave it where it's at and like not deal with it is because well look the leaves are still there you know it was still trying to kick out new leaves it was still trying to grow new leaves so that lets me know this plant still has some light in i'm glad that i am repotting it now because right now even though it is fall it is some still some good sunlight outside so it can still like you know start to grow over the next couple of weeks before it starts to get really really cold outside but the great thing about planting is that there's not one specific way to plant everybody can plant in their own very creative very nice way and the plants are gonna thrive just gonna fill around it honey because uh -huh, we gotta shake you back girl we cannot be having you out here in these streets looking like this i'm not going to water it right today i'm going to water it probably like tomorrow or in two days that way i can kind of like let the roots kind of like get acclimated so boom there it is here's the plant all repotted up and yeah stay tuned because i'm definitely going to show y'all how we bounce back keep it in the spirit of allocations this is these are two different allocations and for these two allocations they have been growing significantly well as you can see this one is called allocation poly this is probably one of the easiest allocations if y'all can remember if you're from my tiktok you remember me rehabbing this allocation it was dying significantly i bought it from a big box store rehabs it and she has grown sitting this like she's grown so much my first time repotting her and probably like the same amount of time a year as well this one is called allocation purple sore so she just grew one new leaf and then she also has a baby that's right here if you can see it the issue with this one is that she got root bound she fell out of her pot i put her in this one just been growing so she's just kind of like root bound in here but the good thing is that she's growing new leaf so i kind of already see the roots in here and they look healthy in this one so i'm going to repot these both at the same time because they both require the same pot and mix which i'm going to be using which is again my all-purpose pot and mix we're going to start with the uh poly one thing that i'm always excited about when i'm repotting allocations is to find corms in the pot sometimes if you go too long with repotting allocations the corms might die or they might sprout repotted my, my allocation silver dragon and i think it has six corms and now i have like six new allocation silver, silver dragon babies. and if y'all ever want to know why allocations are my favorite just look at the leaves the leaves are so gorgeous they're so striking they're so luxurious they are honestly the easiest to grow if you ask me oh girl she is roots abound honey okay this just shows you that she has literally ate, eaten up everything and she's literally taking everything so now she's just, just kind of trying to thrive even when her roots are just super super root bound so she's she's living but she's not thriving there's a little baby right here that wants to come out that wants to grow so that's why we want to go ahead and just give her some better nutrients you know some new nutrients give her get it into another a bigger pot um, a good thing about allocations is that they do like to be root bound. So this is like one time. This is perfect. I tease the roots enough to where I'm not causing like damage to it. And I'm going to go up two inches bigger. And I'm just going to take all that old mix. Put it in the pot. Put it in here. And boom girl, it is done. I'm excited to see what this girl is going to do in the next couple of months. That's just going to give her enough time to just thrive get herself together you know check on her mental health unlike what black women are given every day when we try to get help for our mental health issues when we try to explain what we're going through we're all always gaslighted always told that you know our feelings are invalid that we can't speak on certain topics we can't speak on mental health we can't seek the help that black men get within our community and we're often shunned that's why a lot of black women don't say anything in domestic violence situations and rape situations so look at this just look how dramatic that is once i repot it and put it in another pot and it likes it it's gonna perk back up same thing again boom it came right on out i'm looking at this and i'm thinking girl you are not that root bound <laughs> it look really good it look really healthy i just don't think that she's root bound so honestly i'm probably gonna put her back in the same size pot and again just update the nutrients if you remember this plant i repotted her as well on my tiktok and she grew so much so pretty and i was gonna look at possibly detaching the baby but i'm just gonna leave it alone i'm gonna leave it alone and see if, if it's gonna grow 
mix that old mix all on this together like if we were all together on ensuring that black women got the help that we need that black women are listened to on a daily basis that black girls have the outlet that they need to tell when they're being molested to tell when they're being raped to tell when they're experiencing domestic violence will be much better as a society and as a community as a whole make sure that y'all are checking out that etsy link in my description box i'm probably gonna leave it in the comments as well go check out why the girls love my potty mix why they rave about it so i just refilled the bag that's another thing about my potty mix honey the bags can be reused and reused and reused until you see them start to break down these are compostable bags my packaging is pretty much 90 percent 95 percent compostable biodegradable all of that good stuff so when a bag like this if you're done with your bag if you have a worm bin all you have to do is take these labels off and go and put them in your worm bin guess what's going to happen when the worms break this down it's going to turn into compost and boom you can put it back into your plants okay girl i'm excited to see what this purple sword do over the next couple of months and then we're going to look at it again we're going to look at both of them again but for the most part we're going to look at this purple sword again to make sure that the roots have not like gone crazy with this one is a refitted for the curse of us so if you watch my tiktok you will know that i repotted this when she was just a little bitty baby and girl like literally this this is a very interesting plant so this she's one of the ones that she was she grew at first and then she just stopped growing and i have not done much to the mix or anything the only thing that i do is i add in a hydroponic fertilizer every week that i use for my luck of plants i, I just fertilize with all of those I, or I add the nutrients to all of those all of my plants and girl she just been thriving i have not updated her nutrients since last year or anything like that so i'm excited to see what she looked like inside the pot this is her area root and as you can see there are leaves that grow out of the area root so I, i've been going back and forth on whether or not i would give her a moss pole i haven't seen the area root grow out so much like like my sarah's do to where you know the roots need something to climb up or stabilize themselves these leaves are very luxurious it also penetrates as well i'm excited to get it into my new potty mix because i feel like with the nutrients that's in this potty mix it's just like it's gonna flourish even more all right this one is a little stuck in the pot use this again to kind of tease if you are a black woman that it is in a domestic violence situation then i'll leave some links below to help you figure out how you can get out within your state and also if you just want to learn more educate yourself on how disproportionately black women are affected by but uh, by domestic violence more than any other woman in america the only thing i feel like needs to happen with this is just an update of nutrients I'm just going to probably rinse this pot out and just reuse it. I'm going to take just a little bit of the old mix and put it down there. Y'all will find that my all-purpose potty mix can pretty much work for almost every tropical plant. And leave a comment down below. Let me know for the ones that I'm just updating the mix on. Which one have repotted them? Which one did the curse of a the um allocation purpose sword would you have put it in a whole new pot or would you just did exactly what i did and just updated the mix on it she is repotted girl science and delivered and we're gonna see in the spring how many more leaves she's gonna grow and how big of the finish rate she's gonna be now again if you're loving this video as much as i'm loving teaching y'all about these plants and the repotting process then go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button now these two this one is obviously a peace lily that everyone knows about okay this is what i call my peace lily girl okay and then this one is an ethereum now this one has a very special place in my heart because this was the first plant video that i created on tiktok that helped me go viral okay so this is my girl i love her she has grown so much more um since you know the last time i did this repotting since i showed y'all what the her repotting looked like um she was very very root bound in her pot and i think i was talking about y'all husbands and ashiness and all that so yeah definitely go check it out her spate has not grown back yet so i'm excited to get her into my all-purpose mix because i feel like it's going to give her the nutrients that she needs now here's the thing these were repotted into african violet acidic soil right I have not tried a peace lily with my potty mix, so I'm definitely going to see how it's going to do. Usually, peace lilies like, a, you know, a range from 6.0, and they could go into the acidic range. So, I don't think she's going to be that finicky, that picky, or anything like that. And then, for the anthurium, I am growing two other anthuriums in my all-purpose potty mix. So, one is a kokidama that I made with uh, dirt and I put the sphagnum moss around it. And then another one 
is a different type of Ethereum. So that's why I feel like they're, gonna, they're both going to do really well in my mix. I'm excited. I don't think that either of these are pop bound. So it's probably just going to be a situation where I'm just updating the mix in both. Let's start with the Peace Lily first. If you see where she's kind of browning at. Okay, if it's any other plant in here that does not like to be dry. So make sure that you are always giving this girl a moist potty mix like mine. Or you're staying on top of the water. If you cannot commit to that, you do not have a piece of it, okay? I let this girl thrive in a window that is getting a good amount of sunlight. She's loving it over there. A good indication that your plants are too dry is when you can pick it up, throw it, and there's like no kickback. What I do, uh, especially with peace lilies, is I just pull, 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 pull. That's it. Just again, this is also why I told y'all that I like to let the leaves get so dark and brown because it's so much easier. I feel like when you are pulling the leaves out when they're just starting to yellow, you're causing so much stress to the plant. If you're trying to like pull it off and it gives you a tug and a, a, another leaf comes with it, that's that's too much stress. Um, so now that we got off the dead leaves, now the only thing that's left to do is just pull it out the pot. I mean, you don't want it to be in a bigger pot so much to where the roots are receiving too much water because this is a plant that is susceptible to root rot. So I am going to give it just a bigger pot because it is a little bit more root bound than, you know, the other plants that I did not give a pot to. I might mix this one, you know what, I might mix this one in with my potty mix because I will say this, black gold potty mix is probably like the best quality potty mix that I've had that store bought. If you're not too sure about my potty mix and you want to, you know what I mean, if you want to support me by my potty mix, okay? But if you want to, you know, get something that's more store by over the counter, definitely go with black gold. I decided to go with a full 8 inch, a wide 8 inch pot. So you put them a little bit down in there. Let me know if y'all would use my all purpose mix that's not highly acidic for this after this came out of an acidic soil. I just don't think that anything's gonna happen. I think it's gonna grow really, really well. It might grow even better. At this girl's in her new pot. She's she's not even filled all the way up to the top. I'm excited to see how she does. For those of y'all who get Peace Lily as presents, okay? Take what I say to heart, take it to heat. They're not hard plants. Get that out your mind. Okay, so moving on to our little Anthurium girl, the girl that started it all. So popped her out and she is not root-bound. She's, she's doing okay. I don't feel like this is a cause for a bigger pot. I really don't. I feel like I can just put her back into the same pot, go ahead and update the mix, and she's going to be fine. Just kind of like tease it a little bit. These girls, I find that, you know, they love, they don't like to be wet either. They like to dry out in between waterings. And Thurians, to me, love sunlight. They do. They love sunlight a lot. So make sure you give them enough adequate sunlight. They both, one of them, you know, the Kokidama one, it lives in front of a window. And then my other one lives on top of my, at the very top of my green wall. And the grow lights come right down on it. Y'all want me to talk about grow lights because the grow lights on my green wall, they are, grew, oh my God, they are great. I'm actually going to do another video that's going to be talking about how to prepare your plants for fall. And what to, how to set up, you know, your house, your apartment. So I'm going to be talking about grow lights in that video. I'm like teasing it a little bit. Her roots look healthy. They look good. And I'm just going to update the mix by mixing in my mix with it and then just repotting it with that. And putting it in there. Just feel around it. And boom, honey. She good to go. And we will see her in spring along with my Peace Lily girl. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but if you still rock with me, thank you so much. This is my Frankest Audrey. I top dressed this one with my uh potty mix my updated potty mix and girl she's just been growing new shoes she has three new shoes already usually the shoots will come from the top of the plant up here but now they're growing at the you know the, the stem the bottom of the uh, the trunk this one we're just gonna check to see i don't think that it is pot bound because there are no roots coming out at the bottom of it but we're gonna check to see just to make sure this pot is a glaze ceramic i got it at the hilton carter collection i love 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 it i haven't pretty much seen any of my plants die in my glaze ceramic unlike the fact that black women are dying more from domestic violence situations than white women or any other woman in america the top leading cause for death for black women and girls between 18 and 35 is domestic violence make sure that you're reaching out to your your friend your mother your family member whoever it is that is in a black who is black in a domestic violence situation and help them get out help them get the resources they need because the lack of resources the lack of of us thinking that people are going to understand us or listen to us the lack of knowledge about the law all of that 
create creates an environment where we stay and we're constantly being killed it's this year in the past couple of months we have seen more and more situations of black women being killed brutally by domestic violence situations one one woman was stabbed to death another woman was shot in front of her children at what point do we say it's enough at one point do we say that this is an epidemic and that we're that we're needing to fight for the lives of black women and girls gonna pull this ficus rg out the reason why i know that ficus is do well in my mix is because i do have another ficus plan this is what my third ficus if you're gonna cut the fiddly fig that i'm also gonna repot the other one is a ficus burgundy oh lord i'm a little nervous i feel like i'm stabbing it coming out girl get a handy dandy butter knife you can make sure it's clean so that you're not you know putting anything on your plants all right let's see hours later Girl, this is gonna take some more. What is going on? It is snug. All right, here we go. Let's see. Cause this is crazy. Look up. Oh no! So I just pulled apart the whole root system. I hate that for her. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't think it's gonna make such a big difference. Cause right now it's looking brownish. You know, some people might get it mixed up with root rot, which it is not. Because let me tell you something. Let's rein it in, okay? Let's rein it in. A, a, a lot is going on right now, okay? We tearing off leaves, we tearing off roots, okay? We doing a lot. So let's calm it down. Because it is so muddy, I'm probably just gonna give it a whole new mix. Like these roots at the bottom got so attached to the bottom of the pot and that's what had it so snug in there. Mine just sit right in the windowsill. This is the windowsill next to me. If you see, if you can see on this side, this is how much light is coming in. It's getting a lot of good lighting. The thing about repot is that it's that unless you use like a whole different substrate, like it's all the same. Once you learn how to repot one plant, you literally gonna repot every plant the same way over and over and over again. Good thing about this is that this pot is that it's so deep. I believe this is like a nine inch. It's deep in there, so the root system still have a long, it literally has a long way to grow up and out. You don't have to go the route that I'm going. When you're just trying to give it nutrients. You could just go ahead and top dress it and that, that could be, you know, you giving it nutrients as well. The reason why I'm going the route that I'm going is because I haven't seen all of the, my plants roots. I haven't seen these roots in a long time, so that's why I want to go ahead and just repot them all or you know take them out look at check to see how healthy the roots are that's our ficus archer girl keep it in the spirit of the ficuses let's move, we're gonna move along to the fiddle leaf fig this fiddle leaf fig was a lot bigger than this and um i remember i brought it home and i put it further away from the window and i was watering the water and it just kept dying and then i read somewhere that you got to put it in bright or sometimes i wreck some like you know, and that's what did the trick. My issue with the fiddle leaf fig is that it's pretty and everything, and all of my leaves are kind of growing from the top. They're not sprouting out like how you saw in the in the fight in the last fight is Audrey. My issue is that it's just not growing as fast as I, as I thought it was. And then the first mix that I put it in was like a barky, you know, pine bark fine, you know, type of mix with a little bit of succulent mix. But this time I'm just gonna use only my all-purpose pot mix. I'm gonna just mix it in depending on how the root system looks. So it did start to give us some some leaves but not a whole lot of leaves oh and that's what i want i want a big huge glorious for the leaf fig pop it on out i think the, i think the root system looks very very good i don't feel like it's super root bound to where it might need another pot but, but i just feel like it's just been an internal dormancy and i'm trying to just like give that mm, to get out of dormancy so i'm just kind of breaking apart the root ball not too much not too crazy or anything like that so I feel like for me, that's enough. I'm just gonna go ahead and repot it in a 10 inch terracotta pot. I'm just gonna take all of this mix and we're just gonna put it back in there. And so I feel like it's three, cause this is a bigger pot. Would you have given in a 10 inch pot with this root system or would you have waited and put it back into the old pot? Let me know. Have a little bit more left over. And I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Look, at this point, if you're still watching this video, girl, you are invested, okay? We sisters, we friends, we best friends, all of that. So you might as well press that subscribe button, right? That's the fiddle leaf. I'm going to leave it alone. We're going to water it later. And we're moving on to our bigger, bigger, bigger plants. <laughs> this is my bird of paradise. I don't know if y'all can see her from there. Probably can't. 
We're going from this big old 10 inch, okay girl, cause you about to get an upgrade to a nice 12 inch glazed ceramic pot. The Bird of Paradise is also a plant that was an OG plant of mine. She has grown so much since my repotting of her. If you haven't seen that, go watch my TikTok. This pot of me that I have this Bird of Paradise in is very basic, okay? I repotted this plant when I first started to learn about potting mixes. Now we're gonna give it like some really good nutrients, some trace nutrients, all of that good stuff. She just comes out the pot, which I doubt. Yeah, nah, she ain't coming out that pot. Mm. Let's just pour this out for right now. Oh, girl, you huge! Ah! That's what she said. Okay, oh, there we go. Now, ooh, that's a beautiful root system. We did not lose any roots. It looks so good. Again, like if it's any plant that can thrive in any type of potting mix, it's your bird of paradise. She's not, she's not as pot bound as I thought she would be, but she's pot bound enough to where I want to give it another pot. So again, we're just gonna tease, tease them out just a little bit. And that's another thing about growing plants. Once they get huge, ooh, you be like, girl, who gonna handle that plant? Who gonna repot that plant? Okay, look, that's gonna be enough for me. So, this is my other glazed ceramic pot that I got from the Hilton Carter Collection. I bought this pot just for when this Bird of Paradise get bigger in it because I feel like it look, it was gonna look so cute in it. You don't have to water Bird of Paradise as often as you would have to water like a Monstera or something. You can literally water the Bird of Paradise every two weeks or so. At least that's what works for my Bird of Paradise. Let's go ahead and put all the old pot of mix. So literally all of this mix in here. Just pour it in there. And just pop her down, girl. That's done. Girl, who gonna pick this up? Cause not me. It looks like that. Ugh, so pretty. Oh, that is heavy. All right, y'all. So this next plant that we have is the Dracenia Hawaiian Sunshine. See, she does have like some rounded leaves right here. I uh, do believe it's from just like underwatering because these plants do love to stay moist, not wet, but moist uh, or not to be dry excessively. She's very much of a sun lover. She loves to get good sunlight, not really direct sunlight, but really good, bright, medium and direct light. She has some roots growing at the top of her mix. She was uh, potted about Maybe a couple of months ago, about a year ago, in my all-purpose potting mix. You know, I don't see any roots growing at the bottom. Actually, I'm lying. And she has roots coming out at the bottom. See how she's leaning to the side like this? They kind of cross each other. So what I think happened here is that she needs a long pot. I think that, like, some plants, they have a root system that likes to be deep into the pot. The, the browning tips is kind of telling you, oh, she's thirsty, she's underwater, you know, or it could be a nutrient deficiency, but most likely it's underwatering. So let's pop this girl out and see what's going on with her. For the most part, yeah, she's looking good. Which I knew she was because I, I, I saw the roots at the bottom of the pot anyway. She's looking really good. So one thing I'm going to try to do is cross her back over. Maybe help her kind of stand up. Which I really love that it. it's very low maintenance. I feel like I could water this plant like every one and a half to two weeks. Depending, depending on what my plant app says. Uh, and speaking of the Dracenia, doesn't she sound like she could be like a Targaryen on House of, House of Dragons? Like think about it, Rhaenyra, Daenerys, or so Daenerys, Dracenia, or is it Dracania? Like, yeah. this is the pot that I'm gonna be throwing it in. Well, not throwing it in, but repotting it in. This is a 10 inch pot, terracotta. Take that just old potty mix and put it in. All right. Dracania. <laughs> already kind of see a difference or already just for just for me repotting into a thick you know a longer pot i feel like it's looking a lot better as far as like standing up so now the only thing i'm going to do is go ahead and remove all these dead leaves see the difference see the difference definitely see the difference giving her that long pot pretty much did her justice just like if black women actually got justice for being abused like piper lewis who literally went to jail for attacking her 
predator slash the person who raped her still have to pay his family $100,000 because she defended herself or justice for the black activist who's currently right now in jail pregnant just for speaking just for telling them that she's willing to die for the rights of her people for the plight of her people when she's hoped that they're willing to die as well and the judges the racist judges who are giving out these crazy sentences who are getting out these crazy fees and stuff who do not see black women as people because i guarantee you if these were white women they would be they would have the justice plus most this is the last of the tropical plants which is good honey because we're about to run out of condiments anyway this is my Diefenbachia, Diefenbachia, whatever you want to call it, y'all do too much when it comes to these names, okay? Currently, she's in a 12 inch pot. So the reason why you see these leaves, these leaves that are dying, is because, again, underwatering. This girl does not like to be super dry. I don't know if I'm going to have to repot her because I didn't see any roots going out at the bottom. I'm going to check it and see what's up. If so, I do have a 14 inch pot. I do not want to have to use it because it's too damn big. And she's looking pretty, pretty good. At the roots, there's nothing going on here that I feel like is like out of order. The roots look white and healthy. They're just not wrapped around each other. I think she has a lot more room to grow in this pot. So I'm just gonna tease it a little bit and just give her and just update the nutrients. Putting a plant in a pot that's too big can cause that pot, the, the, the soil, the pot of whatever it is you're using to stay too wet for too long and that's what's gonna give you root rot. That's what's gonna give you fungus, nasty. That's what's gonna give you just a whole slew of issues. So that's why I just do not. She look good, okay? Plants do not like to be disturbed. They don't like to be, you know, moved around a lot. So that's why a lot of repotting can cause too much shock to the plant. So you wanna make sure that you're repotting your plants when necessary. And I hope that you figured out what is determined to be absolutely necessary from this video. Let's go ahead and pop her in there. And I'm just gonna pull them off. All right, so boom. We're done with the different bakia. Super easy, super simple. Just updated the nutrients in here and she'll see y'all in spring, honey, okay? I wanted to show y'all this plant app that I use for you know any new plant that I have. I just take a picture of it and I put it in my plant app called Greg. You can use my link to get six months free of Super Greg, and I'll uh, put my link down in the description box below. My plants, I upload my plants to Greg. It sets a watering schedule for them. Um, that's how I keep up. I have so I have like what over sixty plants now, including this green wall. No, I, this is not sponsored by Greg. I did a sponsorship with them last year sometimes, and I still love it. So definitely click the link down below to get six months free of Super Greg, so that you can start to upload, especially for your beginner pl plant parents, so that you can start to upload your plants into Greg. Set a watering schedule, so and you can know which plant needs to be watered when, so you, that you're not overwatering plants. Now that we're moving into fall, it also tells you, hey, the sun is not shining as brightly in your area anymore so let's cut back on the watering so i like to simplify planting as much as i can okay so i put them all in the shower when i have a big batch of plants to water i put them all in the shower i top water and i let the let the water go through and flush through flush through and the good thing about top watering is that it'll flush out any impurities and then i go back over it with my mosquito bits tea and also after i go over it with my mosquito bits tea do that one time and i also spray them down with neem oil Listen, if you've been with me this whole time, you want to keep rocking me, you want to keep learning about social justice issues, definitely click that subscribe button. Make sure that you turn on the notification bell and make sure that you are fighting for black girls around you. Make sure that you are telling your friends, telling your family, and checking in with your strong black girl friends. Make sure that you are standing up that when we tell you that something is affecting us in our community, when we tell you that, oh, cultural appropriation is stopping us from being able to get jobs, or you've been a cultural appropriator, when I can't can't even enjoy my own culture. When we tell you that, do not gaslight us. Do not tell us it's not serious because everything about our plight is very much serious. Pay attention to the black girls around you, okay? And let's be clear, black girls do run culture and black girls are very much lit, okay? So, honey, thank you for rocking with me. And since you've been here the toast, honey, you might as well just go ahead and click the next video.